In theology, universalism is the belief that ultimately all of humanity will be reconciled to God. In contrast, most of Christendom teaches eternal conscious torment, the concept of an eternal hell or lake of fire where the unsaved will be separated from God forever. There are also other views such as annihilationism which teaches that some people will be entirely put out of existence, neither reconciled to God nor eternally tormented. The Universalist believes that even if a person rejects Jesus in this life, either by having never heard of him or by being an atheist or apostate, they will ultimately be forgiven. Today, if you mention Universalism, the first thing that generally comes to mind is the Unitarian Universalist Association, informally known as the UUs. Interestingly though, UUs aren't all Unitarian or Universalist, the name being somewhat of a misnomer. There are many secular humanists, atheists, and so on. The Unitarian Universalist Association, though formed from denominations that at one point considered themselves Christian, no longer accepts the label of Christianity as representing who they are, at least not all of who they are. In comes the Christian Universalist Association. Formed in 2007, the CUA's website explains some of the reasoning behind their formation. They say, During the past few decades before the founding of the Christian Universalist Association in 2007, there has been no well-organized, publicly visible, diverse organization of churches and ministries proclaiming the teachings of a theological, Christ-centered universalism. For this reason, a whole generation of people have grown up with little or no awareness of this great religious message one of the major types of Christian faith throughout history, and do not know it is a credible option for them to believe in. The CUA considers this a tragedy, and the founding of our organization was in large part inspired by our desire to rectify this terrible situation. The CUA operates as a network of independent churches and even allows member churches to be part of other denominations, if those denominations allow it. Let's take a quick look at the basic beliefs of the CUA. They believe in God as the creator of the universe revealed in the person and teachings of Jesus of Nazareth. That the universal commandment is to love and serve one another as we love ourselves. They believe in divine justice, but that forgiveness overcomes it. That no human being will be condemned or allowed to suffer pain and separation forever. They believe that we are all the offspring of God in miracles such as Christ's resurrection, and that God's Holy Spirit has inspired numerous prophets, saints, philosophers, and mystics throughout history. Additionally, they require all members to pledge that they do not endorse any form of bias, hatred, or discrimination on the basis of race, gender, gender identity, age, class, nationality, sexual orientation, physical or mental ability, and any other characteristic of human diversity. As you may have noticed, the descriptions of Jesus don't affirm that he is God. Many people in the CUA have been part of the Unitarian Universalist Association, and a Unitarian viewpoint is more common than a Trinitarian one, but both viewpoints, along with modalism, forms of pantheism, or other viewpoints, are acceptable. In another list of CUA affirmations, they state that the creator of the universe desires a personal relationship with every person. Articles on the CUA website commonly state strong opposition to things like penal substitutionary atonement. For example, a February 2021 book review of The Universal Christ by Richard Rohr. Part of the review says, Rohr points out that the doctrine of original sin was never mentioned in the Bible and wasn't even proposed by the church patriarchs until Augustine did so in the 5th century. Even then, the concept didn't take full hold within the church until the 11th century when St. Anselm devised the equally abhorrent vicarious atonement theory, which states that Jesus died on the cross because God couldn't forgive humanity for its original sin, a false concept itself, until there was a blood sacrifice of a divine cosmic clone of God as a substitute for the punishment humanity deserved. Rohr is unsparing in describing the horrible impact these two doctrines have had on Christian faith, including how God has been depicted as a sadistic deity that needs payment before he can love his creation, and that nothing Jesus said, did, or taught in his lifetime means anything, because his death is all that matters for our salvation. Rohr states that for Christianity's fullest and deepest meaning to emerge, we must reject any theory of salvation that is based on violence, exclusion, social pressure, or moral coercion. This paragraph is followed with the statement that Rohr's views on soteriology or salvation are in harmony with Christian universalism. Holding to universalism makes the CUA considered heterodox by much of Christianity, and that also means that people in the CUA are willing to question other major components of mainstream Christianity. They say, if you, like us, seek to follow the path of Jesus without a lot of outdated and restrictive doctrinal baggage, our organization might serve your spiritual needs and be a place you can feel at home. 
Some of the baggage they refer to are beliefs like the rapture, viewing homosexuality as sinful, and of course, eternal hell. One article on the CUA website says that teaching children about an eternal hell is child abuse. Another way to get the viewpoint of the CUA is their viewpoint of those who don't identify as Christian. The FAQ page says, Saintly souls who are identified with religions other than Christianity, but who actually walk the path of Christ in the way they live their life, are far more truly Christian than fundamentalists who focus on converting everyone to their narrow church creed to avoid being tortured forever in the fires of hell. For example, Mahatma Gandhi was a Hindu who rejected many Christian doctrines, but had great reverence for Jesus and sought to live according to his teachings. It doesn't matter that he never called himself a Christian. In fact, people like him are more truly Christian than many people who claim the mantle of Christianity and proudly declare themselves Christian. They also say, The Bible is a great repository of truth that remains relevant today, but it is not the only source of truth, nor is there only one correct interpretation of the Bible. We study the Bible with an open mind and an open heart and with an understanding of the cultural context in which its various books were written. And wherever else truth may be found, we are not afraid to explore and gain wisdom. We believe Jesus would want us to do this because it is the spirit that matters rather than the religious label. Jesus was not a fundamentalist. Here's the CUA's prediction for Christianity in the future. We believe Christianity today is moving away from denominationalism and toward a realignment in which two broad categories of Christian belief will emerge, fundamentalism and universalism. We believe the time for sectarian divisions among Christians has passed, and today God is calling all Christians, and indeed all people, to move beyond petty differences of religion that have divided us and strive to come together in a universalist spirit of brotherhood. If we are willing to look honestly at our various religious traditions, we will find much truth that can unite us, and also many doctrines that must be put aside as outdated or simply erroneous. The Christian Universalist Association calls upon all people, both Christian and non-Christian, to move toward a more universalist understanding of spirituality, and to reject the scourge of angry, hateful, and violent fundamentalism that threatens to destroy the planet upon which we all must live together. The CUA often states on their website that they don't view themselves as a denomination, but more recently seem to come to terms that they're beginning to look that way. A 2020 article says, Unlike many denominations, we don't have any hierarchical ecclesiastical structure. That means we don't look like a lot of denominations, but we do provide actual denominational style ministry assistance every single day. There are currently fewer than 10 churches listed on the website of the CUA. One is dually affiliated with the Cooperative Baptist Fellowship. For more information about religions, denominations, Christian movements, and more, subscribe to the Ready to Harvest channel.